Oh, people are no longer prepared to, to actually suffer discomfort. It would seem that these days we've well and truly entered the comfort zone. Discomfort is something we reserve for, you know, the poor, the third world, old people. Not for us. We've become really hooked on comfort. It's this thing that, you know, it's sort of inexplicable. You know, and when we did, you know, sort of come to designing this very comfortable house, I was faced with the dilemma, do we put in air conditioning? Because one of the things that we become climatised to is aircon. And I actually thought there has to be a little bit of a sign in that aircon in the word con, that it is a bit of a con in the sense that the more air conditioning the world gets, the more air conditioning the world's going to need because the air conditioning is actually going to make the world much hotter. And if it's much, much hotter or much more extreme temperatures, you're going to need air conditioning. And really, if you think about it, we do live in a fairly temperate climate, probably one of the best climates in the world. And if you've got windows and it's hot, you could probably open them. Like, I mean, it's not like Dubai. It's not like 60 degrees or something. It's like, oh, it's a little bit warm. Oh, it's a little bit hot. I'm a little bit sweaty, a little bit sweaty. Oh. I mean, you can just have a bit of a shower or even, you know, go down to the pool. Or We've got to think all an ocean as well. So I figured, you know, open a window. And then when it's cold, because it doesn't even get that cold here. Like, it gets a little bit, oh, put on a cardigan. Oh, but needs some pants. Uh, oh, well, you know, there's like it's a, I, I get excited about it getting cold. I mean, you don't really. I thought, well, you don't really need air conditioning. And then I thought, well, fans are ugly, so um, we won't be getting them. And it felt like an environmental choice. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just thought, you know, what's the point? You know, and it's sort of it's a little bit like that. And and. Uh, it is true. We don't like being, people don't like being uncomfortable anymore. It's all about being comfortable. Do you remember? Because I remember profoundly in my childhood about being stuck in a car in summer, going on a family holiday with a bunch of kids in the back seat. You know, all of you sort of in the back of a HR hold in the middle of summer. There was no aircon in the car. Aircon was when all the windows were down. You were getting a hot, sort of full on sort of breeze. Don't really breeze, wind burning your eyes till I was so dry you couldn't actually close them when you got out. There was no safety belts and I used, there was two vinyl straps either side and only the kids on the side got to hold them. The kid in the middle got to go through the window and you were sweating so it was like a like a sweaty vinyl slip and slide in there and there was no GPS because mum had a map and she couldn't read a map anyway and dad was swearing at her and they were smoking and every now and then they'd throw their cigarette out the window would suck back in the other window because it was open and would fall on a kid and the cigarette would burn into their legs and they'd scream and they wouldn't stop the car they didn't care they'd just say shut up you sook and they'd keep going and you'd eventually arrive at like your grandmother's house and you were so relieved to be there and it didn't matter that your grandmother's house was incredibly boring and had nothing to do because they didn't have a pool or a lovely landscape leisure area or didn't even have a television. I had a television with a little black and white one in the lounge but I only got put on at news time to watch the ABC and occasionally sale of the century if you were lucky or maybe F Troop you never know but that would be it at, at grandma's house incredibly boring and when you went to sleep at grandma's house you slept in a bed that was 40 years old your father had slept in that bed you know and then you fell on that bed you broke your leg your ass broke it was so hard that bed because they didn't care the combined age of every mattress in that house was something like 300 years nobody had anything comfortable because it wasn't about comfort it was about function it was still a mattress it hadn't burnt to the ground it had broken it was still going so you kept it you know if you've sat on a chair or a lounge of that whole time of, of you know around then it, there was no concept of of luxuriating it was about getting back up again if it was too comfortable you don't get up oh no no none of this beautiful cushioned comfort that I've become so nicely <laughs> fond of no nothing like that hard beds hard chairs small nasty lounge chairs this was the world of discomfort it was a sustainable world unlike our lovely luxurious comfortable world we're trying to build <sighs> for some of us some people just won't be comfortable in this new world order one thing i have noticed though which is a real side effect of this very comfortable era where we're marketed extreme levels of cushioned comfort, upgrading our pillows once a year to full feather down, 
special velvety seats on our chairs of our car and iPods and amazing things. Something I've noticed that the more comfort we've got for our leisure, the fatter we've got. So maybe there's some sort of correlation. If I want to lose weight, I don't have to worry about what I eat. I just have to get some really bad chairs. I think I'm onto something. See you next week. I'm just going to set fire to the furniture. Toodaloo!